In this video, we're going to see unit step response of a standard second order system for underdamped case. Here is the system represented by the transfer function, which we're calling standard second order system, and it is supplied with an input in time domain r of t, which is basically a unit step where input is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 for t greater than 0. Equivalent Laplacian represented as r of s, which is given by 1 over s. Whereas the output we are calling C of S and its time domain is C of T. And our intention is to find what is C of T here. And that too, we are trying to find C of T for underdamped case. Where underdamped means when zeta is under 1, we call it underdamped case. And we have seen already that uh, zeta we pick positive values. So we are taking zeta is definitely greater than 0. Finding C of S is straightforward compared to C of T. So let me write here, C of S can be written as R of S times the transfer function T of S. Where R of S is 1 over S and T of S is given in that box that we have here, which represents the standard second order system. We can rewrite this into 1 over S minus S plus 2 zeta omega n over S square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. You can verify this as if you do cross multiplication, you'll end up with s square plus 2 zeta omega n s getting cancelled with the s square plus 2 zeta omega n s in the right side. So you'll be left with omega n square in the numerator and in denominator we'll have s times s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square, which is exactly the one that we have here. Now, to make it very specific to underdamped case, let us find the roots of this denominator polynomial, which is also called characteristic polynomial, where s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square can also be written as s minus s1 times s minus s2, where s1, 2 is given by minus zeta omega n plus or minus j omega d where omega d is damped oscillation frequency, which we have seen, which is omega n times square root of 1 minus zeta square. If you substitute the s1 and s2 values into the equation that we have here, it can be written as s plus zeta omega n minus j omega d times s plus zeta omega n plus j omega d. This is like a minus b times a plus b, where a is s plus zeta omega n, b is j omega d. So we can rewrite this as a square minus b square. So s plus zeta omega n whole square, a square, minus b square, b is actually j omega d. Square of it will be j square is minus 1, minus of minus it becomes plus, times omega d square. So s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square can be written as s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. So let me substitute that into this and rewrite this expression where it can be written as 1 over s minus s plus 2 zeta omega n whole divided by s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. This can be still further reduced into a form like 1 over s minus s plus zeta omega n over s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square minus zeta omega n divided by s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. The reason why we rewrote this is because now it will look very similar to some of the standard functions that we have. All we need to do to find C of t is now take the inverse Laplace of this C of s that we have. So inverse Laplace of 1 over s is 1 times u of t. So I'm simply writing 1 because I'll get u of t for all of the terms that I'm going to do. I'll write it at the end. Now for the second term. We have this, it looks very similar to something we know of. So let me write. So for cos omega dt, the Laplace is 
s over s square plus omega d square. It looks pretty similar, right? We have a s time in the numerator, s square plus omega d square. Just that we have zeta omega n added to it. So if you remember, if we add an exponential to it, e for minus zeta omega n t, where zeta omega n is actually the term there, times cos omega dt, the Laplace is s plus zeta omega n over s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. So we can write this Laplace inverse as e power minus zeta omega nt cos of omega dt. And now coming to the third term. Let's find what's the inverse Laplace for this term. For sine omega dt, the Laplace is omega d over s square plus omega d square. It looks pretty similar, except that the numerator is not actually omega d, but it doesn't matter because we can multiply with omega d and divide with omega d and take omega d to get this form. So if you do the same thing with respect to cos that we did, e power minus zeta omega nt times sine omega dt, we get omega d over s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square. So it looks pretty similar, except that we need to add term there. So if we see, we can rewrite this as omega d over omega d. We can rewrite this stuff as zeta omega n over omega d, which is nothing but we see here omega n times square root 1 minus zeta square. So I'll write it here, 1 minus zeta square, where omega n, omega n cancel. And then we are left with omega d over s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square, which is exactly given here. So we'll write it here, e power minus zeta omega nt times sine omega dt. And all the terms that we have seen here have u of t with them. So I'm writing u of t here. This is what we got for c of t. We can further rewrite this into a simpler form where c of t can be written as 1 minus Let's take e power minus zeta omega nt, common out of the two terms, and the over 1 minus zeta square whole square root. Then we will have y root of 1 minus zeta square times cos omega dt plus zeta times sine omega dt times u of t. For underdamped case, we had the roots moving on the s-plane. Plus j omega n minus j omega n for zeta equals to zero. As zeta was increasing from zero to one, the roots were moving from the imaginary axis to the real axis. Similarly for the root on the below as it was increasing. So they were meeting on the real axis for zeta equals to one. So this was moving this way as zeta was changing from zero to one and this root was moving from j omega axis to real axis as zeta was changing from 0 to 1. For any one case, let's say if we have a root here, from the root to the origin, the magnitude is omega n. And we also saw that its projection over to j omega axis, the magnitude from there to origin is basically omega d. And its projection onto real axis, distance is zeta omega n. And we defined a theta over here. And if we can rewrite them, if you find cos theta for this one, cos theta can be written as adjacent side, which is zeta omega n over the hypotenuse, which is omega n. So we can say wherever we have zeta, we can write as cos theta. So we have one place where it is zeta, we can write it as cos theta. And if you see what is sine theta for that point, sine theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. Opposite side is this, and the magnitude there is omega d, which is given by omega n times square root of 1 minus zeta square over the hypotenuse, which is omega n, which can be written as square root of 1 minus zeta square. So we have a term here, which can be written as sine theta. Now, I'm going to substitute for these values. I'll write it as sine theta 
and for this one it is cos theta if you look at this it looks like sin a cos b plus cos a sin b which can be written as sin a plus b so I'm going to rewrite this output expression that we are looking at c of t can be written as 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n t over square root of 1 minus zeta square times sine of omega dt plus theta times u of t where omega d is given by omega n times square root of 1 minus theta square and theta is given by tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square over zeta. We'll discuss in more detail how the c of t looks in time domain and its associated design parameters that we are interested in in the next section.